Most wires have insulation around them. The insulation does not conduct electric current. Some examples of insulators are glass, paper, and Teflon. They have a high resistance and work very well as an insulator. This coating will need to be stripped in order to expose the copper that exists in the wire. Touching a bare wire isn't a good idea because it can allow the current to flow through your body. Or it may allow two wires to touch and that would create a short circuit. Let's begin by talking about wire. Wire comes in different thicknesses. The wire is going to allow the electrical current to flow. Each wire has uh, some numbers and letters stamped on it. We call this the American wire gauge AWG and the numbers tell you the thickness of the wire. So for example, the smaller the number the thicker the wire. 10 gauge wire is thicker than 12 and can allow more current to flow. Now the wire that we're going to be using, the white is 12 gauge, the black is 12 gauge, the green is 12 gauge, and the red is 14 gauge. It's slightly thinner, perhaps you can see the difference. Now the amount of current that can flow in a wire depends on a few factors. For example, it depends on what the wire is made out of. Our wire has a copper core and there are two types of core. You can either have solid or braided. We're going to be working with braided wire. It's a little bit more flexible and easier for us to work through the metal conduit. Um, at any rate, so the amount of current that flows through the wire depends on a few things. It depends on the type of wire. It depends on the length of the wire and the condition of the wire, too. Generally, thicker wires carry more current. This is a pair of wire strippers. They open by taking this clip on the left-hand side, squeezing them slightly, and releasing the clip to your left. The spring in the middle will then have its tension released and be free for you to use. Now notice that there are numbers along the side of these clippers. In AWG, we talked about that earlier in terms of the gauging system and the particular numbers for the wires we have. So you're going to locate the number. I see there is a 12. That would be where you place your wire. Using the wrong gauge when you're stripping has a couple of effects or consequences. If you use too large a setting, you won't take the insulation off the wire. Too small would produce nicks in the wire, it would weaken the wire, and you wouldn't want to use a piece of wire with nicks in it. You would want to cut that off and try again. This area in the center acts as a pair of scissors and gives you the ability to cut the wire. At the end, this acts as a pliers. You can use that to turn your wire into a U-shape to make a good connection.
we've got some 12 gauge wire that we want to strip. We're going to use our wire strippers. Look for the number 12 on the strippers. 12 gauge will fit into that slot. Press it in about 3 quarters of an inch. Push down. Pull. Wiggle that away. We've got a loose end here. We're going to twist this by simply rotating it and we're done. Now we're going to demonstrate cutting with our wire cutters and strippers. So uh, I have a piece of exposed copper wiring here. I'm going to put the cutting tool in the end, simply press down like a pair of scissors, and we've cut off what we need. To make the proper connection, we're going to take the piece of wire that's had the insulation stripped back about three quarters of an inch. We're going to use the long nose end of our wire strippers in order to make this U-shaped or half moon shaped curve in the wire. And then there is a right and wrong way to attach this to either our switch, our outlet, or our bulb base. We want to have the opening of this crescent moon be on the right hand side because when you tighten the screw with a screwdriver uh, the screw is going to turn clockwise. I like to remember the phrase righty tighty lefty loosey and if you were to turn this around and go the other direction you would be screwing it in and you would have this come off the screw. It wouldn't be as tight a connection. It wouldn't be as uh, conductive of the electricity as if you do it this way. So we're going to tighten the screw down firmly. We're going to make sure there's no wire insulation underneath the screw because the insulation would not allow the flow of the electricity. We want to make sure we have good conduction. The circuit breaker box looks like this. I'm going to have the power cord coming in the black or the hot wire from the power cord will go into this screw at the top of my circuit breaker. I have the neutral wire from my power cord coming in. It's going to be inserted in here and I'm going to use an Allen wrench to tighten this up. Then I'm going to have the ground attached with this alligator clip to this green screw. You're going to have power coming into the circuit breaker box. There are two wires that you will need to attach. There will not be a ground wire for you. You're going to have one black or hot wire coming into the bottom of the circuit breaker. The other thing that you will need to do is to take the neutral wire and attach it to the bus bar. You can attach it in any one of these screws and that would be just fine. Do not alter anything else that I have done in the circuit breaker box. Thank you. As we bend this in a half moon shape, we're going to attach it to our outlets, to our switch, or to our bulb base, our lamp holder. These are the three components that we'll be working with in our lab. It's important to identify the screws. When you see a brass colored screw, that is used with black wire. We call that the hot connection. When you see a silver screw, a silver screw would be this one. You're going to use white wire, which is neutral. Notice that there is no silver screw on a single pole light switch. You simply have the two brass screws and the green. The green is used as a ground, or sometimes you may see a bare wire that is also used as a ground. Note that there is no ground on my plastic lamp holder. time for us to wire our single pole switch. As a clue, we're going to take a look at our connections. 
I happen to notice that there's a ground screw that's going to be connected to my box. I happen to notice that that's already in place for me. I also notice that I have two brass screws that denotes that I'm going to be attaching a black wire or a line that's hot. The fact that I see no silver tells me that there isn't going to be a white wire or a neutral attached to this particular device. Uh, I notice also that in a single pull switch they say on or off. A three-way switch has no markings on it because when one switch is up another may be down and so if you're attaching this particular one to our circuit please put it in the correct orientation so that it reads the correct way. So for example I happen to see that the light is off flick it up it's now on you probably want to have that ground screw to the top and on the left. Alright let's catch some clues from this. The fact that there is no silver colored screw on this I'm going to suggest to you that you may want to send your black wire from your circuit breaker box to this switch. You're probably going to have black coming in. It looks like you're going to have black coming out. I'm going to let you take the circuit the rest of the way. Please realize that you will have to complete the entire path of the circuit to have it working correctly. Each of the metal boxes has a green screw in it. This is your ground screw. There will be grounding that will need to be done for the switches. You will also be grounding on the outlet. There is no ground screw for the bulb base, so you will not be required to do that. careful not to screw the plastic bulb bases down too tightly. If you do, you will break them. The box in the middle is called the junction box. It shows where the wires are passing from one metal box to the other. Let's see if our setup works for one single pulled switch and a ball base. Hey, nice job. Good work. Let's see if our setup is going to work for one single pulled switch, a bulb base, and an outlet. Hey, there's the light. And I happen to notice that we've got the right lighting set up in our outlet telling us that it's been wired correctly. We have two amber lights. Fantastic job. High five.